What, dear friends, is your definition of wealth and success? Is it a six-figure salary, a mansion with a pool, or perhaps that shiny new sports car? Or could it be something less tangible? Consider the story of a man named Bob. Bob is a simple fellow, you see. He owns a modest one-bedroom apartment, a second-hand bicycle, and a collection of worn-out yet comfortable clothing. His most prized possession? A well-thumbed book of poetry. Bob might not be making it onto the Forbes list anytime soon, but he's one of the happiest people you could ever meet. He spends his days working a job he loves, evenings reading sonnets, and weekends exploring the great outdoors on his trusty two-wheeler. He might not have much, but he doesn't need much either. Then there's Susan. She owns a villa on the French Riviera, a yacht and a wardrobe that would make any fashionista green with envy. Yet she spends her days worrying about the stock market, her evenings planning her next extravagant purchase, and her weekends, well, worrying some more. Despite her riches, Susan is perpetually stressed and happiness is a stranger to her. What sets Bob and Susan apart? It's not their bank accounts, but their needs. While Susan constantly craves more, Bob is content with less. He's rich not in material possessions, but in experiences, in joy, in peace of mind. Now, I'm not suggesting we all sell our belongings and become wandering poets. Although, if that's your cup of tea, by all means go ahead, but perhaps we can all learn a thing or two from Bob and his minimalist lifestyle. Maybe wealth isn't about having the most, but needing the least. So ponder this. Is it the size of your bank account that determines your success? Or is it the size of your needs? Can we redefine wealth not as an abundance of possessions, but as a scarcity of wants? And finally, who do you think is truly richer, Bob or Susan? In the end, remember, it's not about how much you have, but how much you enjoy that makes a life rich. So, how rich is your life?